this was not oh thank you and i knew i forgot to do something um and i should have gotten over to the next screen um so my name is Eric Fosak. I'm a student services librarian um, in health sciences over at UC Davis. Um, this was not a project that I undertook uh, by myself. I had a number of really talented and wonderful people and experts to help me uh, with this process. And that was Zoe Peralta Page, a therapist in Washington, and Denise Dempsey, who's here in Davis and also helps at the School of Nursing uh, for mindfulness training. And um, Gabby Trussell was an undergraduate uh, that um, I met uh, in the first year seminar, and I'll talk a little bit more about everyone's role uh, in a little bit. So, did I start recording? Yes, you are recording. Okay. And thanks for San Jose State for uh, supporting and uh, founding this, this session. Okay. And this is just me trying to be fancy with PowerPoint. So let me move on here. So the key things I want to talk about today uh, for this uh, presentation is really kind of a context of why we did this, um, discuss a little bit about our process, um, how we've employed uh, these team meditations that we've created, and uh, general reception that we're getting or responses that we're getting. Oh, can you hear me still? Okay. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, I just saw that in chat. Um, I do want to acknowledge uh, I'm doing this presentation on uh, at UC Davis uh, from uh, my job site, and I uh, want to acknowledge the Putwin people um, and for their uh, uh, stewardship of the land um, and and uh, that we're presenting on their land. So to create a context. Um, I serve primarily the School of Veterinary Medicine, and at the School of Veterinary uh, Medicine, there is kind of an underlying issue in the field um, broadly. Uh, one in four veterinarians have contemplated suicide. Uh, that's four times the amount of what we see in the general population. Um, it, is a, it is a field where self-care, mental health is an extreme concern, and um, a little bit on my personal side, um, this is kind of second career for me. I started as a veterinary technician. I worked as a veterinary technician and taught at a vet tech school uh, for, you know, over the past 20 years um, until I came over here to UC Davis in 2018. So looking at uh, this field, there, there were a number of surveys that look at, and for the most part, they didn't necessarily identify traits of people that are going into the veterinary profession having higher rates of depression or suicide um, so much as it's what the field is doing to them. So I wanted to address this and part of it was, um, well, there are two factors involved. First of all, I, I do wanna talk real quick about mindfulness and um, how it's played a role. Um, there's a number of pieces of evidence, a number of studies that have looked at mindfulness in human medicine uh, for uh, uh, medical schools, for nursing schools. Um, and of course, there's also a number of studies that have looked at this in veterinary schools and in the veterinary profession uh, more broadly. This isn't meant to be in any way a force plot or anything like that. But for the most part, all of these studies that have looked at mindfulness um, being used in veterinary schools or in the veterinary professional context have shown positive results uh, in terms of uh, resilience and, and the individuals um, being able to handle or prepare or feel better prepared for a situation. Um, okay. So a number of, a few issues have occurred from looking at mindfulness um, in all of these professions across the board. Uh, for one thing, you'll notice the psychometric scales vary pretty significantly. There's a lot of different uh, tests and scales that are being used. And the other piece is um, long-term, looking at the long-term impacts. And I think some arguments can be made for um, selection or allocation of groups and these mindfulness exercises. These are usually kind of voluntary 
um, endeavors. Um, but for the most part, we've seen benefit uh, with mindfulness behaviors, exercises, and uh, the profession. At UC Davis, um, there are a number of names or there are two names that, that come readily to mind uh, that have really investigated mindfulness um, and, and its benefit in the um, um, in any sort of anxiety, stress, uh, depression, including factors of occupational burnout. Um, that's Clifford Saron at the Mind Institute and Philippe Goldine, uh, who's over at the Betty Irene School of Nursing, who Denise Dempsey, um, um, my colleague, has worked directly with. There's another piece to this kind of puzzle or, you know, that really, again, I'm going to talk about this a little later, but the library is really in a unique position because we are at the nexus of campus. So we get to kind of see all these connections um, across different areas. We have something called the Global Tea Initiative at UC Davis, and this is a fairly unique effort that focuses on um, the very specific goals of looking at tea through a scholarly lens, and that's through um, really any perspective, health sciences, nutritional, um, sociocultural, and economic. So this is kind of a unique movement um, that's grown out of uh, UC Davis. And it was really kind of a super um, opportunity for me because uh, amongst other things, I'm a huge tea enthusiast. I've always loved tea. So um, I decided, well, gosh, wouldn't it be a great way to kind of marry two passions of tying tea and the vet school that I serve together? Um, and really what came in helpful in this regard is what's called uh, the Global Tea Scholars. So the Global Tea Scholars is an extension of Global Tea Initiative, but for those researchers, those people that are interested in doing the research um, outside of uh, UC Davis, and that's where I met. For instance, Zoe Peralta Page, who was a therapist in Washington, she joined uh, Global Tea Scholars and was already working on a mindful tea exercise. I want to talk a little bit about um, why tea might be a good complement uh, to any mindful activity or when we're thinking about addressing occupational burnout or stress or anxiety or depression. Um, and that's because of a very unique chemical profile of tea. Um, tea has caffeine, as we all know, but a lot fewer people may be aware that tea also has another chemical component called L-theanine. L-theanine has a very direct uh, correlation to um, anxiolytic properties or reducing stress. Um, and yes, all tea. Thanks for the question. So these are all teas. Now, when I say tea, I do mean specifically Camellia sinensis. I'm not necessarily referring to what's called teasanes, which would be like chamomile or rooibos or things like that. Um, I think a lot of these, if they don't have caffeine, can have, um, in a lot of ways, could be used in lieu. Um, but I am talking today very specifically about Camellia sinensis. Although when I talk about our sessions, um, I will definitely, um, in context of the sessions, we are not prescriptive. It doesn't have to be Camellia sinensis. If they, if they want to, you know, if you want to drink rooibos and have these ses sessions or do, uh, uh, you know, chamomile, that, that's perfectly fine. But tea, Camellia sinensis, the plant, specifically has this quality called L-theanine. Um, arginine, which is a, um, it actually enhances the effects of this anxiolytic effect of theanine. Uh, gallic acid, which has been also shown to have some relaxing effect. Uh, EGCG, which we all associate with green tea, um, has definitely, um, uh, some more of these relaxing effects. And what's very interesting is that a number of studies have looked at L-theanine and caffeine interactions, or at least ratios, and they found they do work synergistically. The caffeine improves focus, but also improves the relaxation of theanine, and theanine um, likewise complements caffeine. It's, it's a very interesting complement uh, of stimulant and something that kind of relaxes, right? Um, so it's, it's really kind of an interesting aspect. And I'm just looking at the chat. And yes, Camellia sinensis is for black, white, green, um, uh, oolong, uh, puer teas. Pretty much um, all of these teas are um, uh, from the plant Camellia sinensis, at least as in terms of color. So 
there's a few factors that might be involved here. There are a few cross-sectional studies that have looked at tea and have found that there's less risk of depression in groups that drink, usually at least four cups a day or more of tea. Um, but what's kind of interesting is, uh, of course, the population selection in these studies. Uh, these are Japanese populations uh, that, that most recent cross-sectional analysis was on. And there's another component to tea, um, especially in Asian populations, that people don't or that we can't really piece out is the social context, right? Um, when we have good social support networks, when we have strong social groups, um, that tends to help mitigate depression because you have a support network. Um, so is it that? Um, is it that so sociality of the T that occurs that helps reduce depression? And then of course, there's always um, a factor of, of you know, a lot of people do associate relaxation of tea regardless of its chemical profiles. Um, now, while there's been some studies that have shown L-theanine to really kind of enhance or, or um, help with anxiolytic factors, the truth is, is that when we've tried to parse out very specific components of tea, like EGCG, L-theanine by themselves, uh, we don't seem see the same effectiveness as when we see populations drinking tea specifically. So whether it's that social aspect, whether it's that um, thing we've already tied with relaxation that we already enjoy tea, um, it's the second most drunk beverage in the world, or um, whether it's just the complement of these phytochemicals that really give it its effect, it's hard to say. Um, but we do see beneficial psychological effect with tea, especially when it occurs with um, factors of occupational burnout, uh, including anxiety and potentially depression. Um, I just want to take a quick check on the chat, see how we're doing. Um, I love somebody's already making a cup of tea, and I should have made myself a cup of tea to kind of relax, like English rose with vanilla oat milk. I love it, Jasmine. That's great. Um, <laughs> mate and rooibos. That's, um, mate has a lot of caffeine, and rooibos is, uh, um, does not. Um, so I actually have a similar kind of combination. So I love that everybody's enjoying tea right now. It's great. All right, so I just wanna talk a little bit about how this started. And um, this really kind of started with a fellow named Harold Lindy, who's a graduate student in the Global Tea Initiative. And he was a design student and he was creating what was called the immersive tea experience. And the hope was that in the library, we would create kind of this immersive tea experience room to help um, people have a different place, a different location to kind of get away from the stress. Because we also know that that getting away, um, or not getting away, but putting yourself outside of where you're always working, where you're always doing stuff can help uh, in terms of our mental state. So we were hoping to create this tea room um, in the Carlson Health Sciences Library. And uh, in the picture below, uh, that's Harold Lindy's design that of a tea kind of immersive space and where you just serve tea and um, his piece was a lot about mindful conversation. So having kind of a quiet round of tea, taking that moment to appreciate um, each other's company and the singleness of that moment, um, the fact that we'll never have it again. Um, so we're really hoping to make this kind of meditation space in the library. We had a lot of interest across a number of groups. Um, UC Davis Career Leadership and Wellbeing, um, of course, had a lot of interest, especially because they, they appreciate us being able to use some space uh, for wellbeing uh, for the veterinary students. Uh, the Global Tea Initiative, of course, was very interested because um, this, is, this is part of their mission to expose and expand awareness of tea. Um, and it was pretty cool because when we were starting initially thinking about the design, we actually un incorporated undergraduates in the product design lab to start thinking about accessibility of the space and designing the space um, so a broad audience can enjoy that space in the library. Um, we did end up actually kind of making a little space um, that was actually kind of ad hoc, but uh, these are two regular uh, tea goers in some of our Zoom sessions that actually physically came over and got to enjoy our space. Um, but unfortunately, <laughs> uh, our library did close in June of 2022, so it was no longer a space for users. So we had to start rethinking um, how we can offer this to the veterinary community and kind of create these, these 
um, mindful moments. So as we were creating, um, or as we were starting to think about this project, um, one of the one of the challenges we had was that there's actually a dearth of literature looking specifically at tea and meditative exercises or mindful um, behaviors, at least looking in some of the major health science psychological databases. Um, we did find a lot of textbooks on mindful um, behaviors um, written by experts in mindful training, um, and but that was typically in the context of mindful eating. Um, and we could find some literature on mindful eating, but there wasn't anything specifically about tea, which was kind of interesting, um, at least to me, because um, John Kabat-Zinn brought up over, of course, mindfulness um, from originally kind of in the Buddhist concept of mindfulness. And of course, Buddhism, tea, and mindfulness kind of go hand in hand. And uh, what we discovered is... Uh, since there was a dearth of academic literature, um, I was really privileged to have this first year seminar for undergraduate students um, uh, for the Global Tea Initiative. And uh, Gabby Trussell uh, was raised Buddhist and incorporated uh, mindfulness and tea um, as part of her regular routine. I was interested in exploring more of it as being part of a regular routine. So um, we kind of had that little tie-in that we could start looking at these kind of mindfulness exercises. Then, of course, um, uh, as we kind of looked around, there's a lot of specialty tea websites that will give you tea meditations or tea mindfulness exercises. Um, I think we borrowed a lot from uh, like Oprah's interview with the Dalai Lama and um, uh, um, in him doing a tea kind of mindfulness exercise. Uh, there's something called um, Global Tea Hut that has some YouTube videos that talks a little bit about that and um, uh, various places like Mayleaf Tea and things like that, like kind of popular tea places. So um, getting everybody on board, um, you know, we had the support of the career leadership and well-being. They're really great about advertising these, but we had to start creating content. And that's where the Global Tea Scholars came in. So as Gabby and I were starting to explore this, I had the opportunity to meet Zoe Peralta Page through, through the Global Tea Scholars and really talk about uh, what she was doing, because she was already interested in doing stuff with a tea mindfulness exercise. And specifically, she was using something called dialectical behavioral therapy, um, which is to reduce anxiety and stress um, by engaging all of your senses, um, which was really kind of a perfect um, opportunity to, to really um, engage with the tea by drawing in and using all of the senses. And one of the things I, I love that Denise Dempsey says is a lot of times people think mindfulness is about quieting of a mind and it's not necessarily. Um, it's really about being present. So we got together, Gabby, Zoe, Denise, and myself, and we started developing out content uh, that we did present um, at the Global Tea Initiative 7th Annual Colloquium um, in 2022. And we actually started offering um, uh, regular Zoom sessions during COVID time, um, even in 2021. So one of the things that we created was um, little self-guided um, um, uh, um, items for meditation with tea using either just a bowl, which is the most accessible way, right? Because presumably everybody has some kind of bowl or um, using, if for those that are really into tea, um, doing the same thing with tea, uh, with, um, tea wear. Um, and there's a particular style from the East, which isn't normally what you think of with a giant teapot, but something called Gong Fu tea which is very um, kind of a ritualized experience, which is nice because you can focus on your breathing and the process and being in the moment. Um, and uh, so we, we offered kind of two variations. Um, and then we offered, um, once we kind of created, we did this on three platforms. We did this as a video um, and I'll put a link um, in the chat. Um, unfortunately, my notes are invisible to me right now, but I'll put the links in the chat here. But um, essentially, we have a podcast called Cha Chat, um, and we created our mindful um, tea experience on there. So we did it essentially four ways. Um, we had uh, a PDF that people could download and just kind of use as a reference. We had an audio podcast that talks about how to go through the steps. And the third step, uh, piece of it was a video. Uh, so we offered a video 
on how to do this. Uh, and then finally, the last step was creating uh, live sessions, or at least um, uh, doing it via Zoom. In some cases, we have done hybrid sessions, and it's been very helpful. Uh, what we've the coverage we've had has been really great, and we're very grateful for it. Of course, we had the opportunity to present this at the GTI Colloquium. Um, this is something we talked a little bit about at the Medical Library Association in 2022 at the annual conference. Um, and we've had some coverage um, in, the, in uh, local papers, the Vanguard and the um, California Aggie. Um, and what we're really interested in right now is uh, submitting this uh, to um, an academic journal. So um, we, we did submit this recently to uh, um, a few uh, journals and uh, we're still awaiting peer review. All right, I just wanna double check where we're at. I see Sabrina's familiar with uh, dialectical behavioral therapy, fantastic. Okay. All right, I'll keep rolling here. So the first time we really offered this, um, so I just wanna talk a little bit about where we've offered this and how, was in the first year seminar uh, for Global T. Um, and what was nice about this particular seminar is the students wrote reflection papers afterwards. And I, I did, um, because the students have copyright to their content, I did get permission from them to do this or, or to, to put this on the site here. But um, essentially it was really, the feedback was so great because so much about it is go, 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 do, do, do. Taking this time for self-care and encouraging students to do self-care um, was extremely important to them. Um, and um, honestly, exactly what we were trying to do. Uh, one of the things that, that have surfaced somewhat in the literature is, is that, you know, how much time you spend doing self-care isn't as important as the regularity of the performance. So, you know, veterinarians were originally kind of what we were thinking of, the veterinary community, um, where you're running from room to room, you're doing different procedures. So really just being able to take five minutes uh, for being in the moment and just kind of just taking a step away for just those five minutes is really the key piece and, and encouraging people to do it regularly, which is where I think the live sessions have come in uh, particularly handy. Um, but essentially, the theme was the same. Um, taking this minute for self-care was so helpful and relaxing uh, for these students and a practice that they hope to incorporate, which is the whole goal and the value of it. Uh, these are some of, uh, uh, this, I took the other, this pic, the picture on the right just um, uh, yesterday <laughs> when we had a session we we're meeting. Um, but with the first year students, we did set up, a, um, I set up a specific kind of tea time where we just sit, we have gong fu, um, we do gong fu tea. That's why you see the specialized kind of wares there, like the little teapot and uh, the fairness pitcher and, and the cups and we have a tea pet. And um, essentially we go through the breathing exercises to relax. Um, we enjoy the tea, we enjoy um, that time. And then we take some time for conversation, um, talking about teas or stressors or anything else like that, but really just kind of building a community. Um, I've started incorporating it. Um, I do clinical rotations in the veterinary medical teaching hospital um, in radiology on Thursdays. And um, I do always bring tea. I don't focus so much on the, the meditation piece as just bringing tea as, as kind of a, a uh, to kind of take a little break or, or relaxation piece, but um, we do incorporate it in the residents, the veterinary residents as they come in. Um, I worked with um, um, their wellness officer and uh, we did this uh, kind of wellness session when they first came in and we kind of talked about taking those five minutes out uh, just to kind of enjoy your tea and be in the moment. And it was really well received. Unfortunately, because there were so many residents, um, I had two teapots and I blew the circuit. So that's always a consideration of electrical draw of um, water uh, kettles. <laughs> we also have um, uh, an open session and you're, you're encouraged to join me, whoever you are, wherever you are. Um, we do do these kind of over Zoom. Um, on Tuesdays at 9.30 in the morning on Pacific time. Um, and we've built a little community. And what we do is we go through this mindfulness meditation and we, um, um, we essentially uh, talk a little bit about the tea we're drinking and 
what we notice about it or what we're drinking from, the bowls we're drinking from or whatnot. But it's really kind of creating that community, that social support uh, network across, you know, just creating community. Um, another group that we that we've been serving lately is uh, the Redwood Seed Scholars. Uh, this is for students of intellectual disability. This is a, a, a non degree program, but to teach kind of um, start teaching different concepts of, or introducing university experience. And um, I worked with Matt Connor, who's a colleague in student services. Uh, he was one of the um, uh, a major player in in this group and he said well why don't you come over and do a tea session so we had some really fantastic sessions um uh with this group to kind of use tea as something to reduce stress and do self-care uh we also um popped this in uh during um and i did this way after the fact that i took the selfie but uh for residents for undergraduate students um in the halls, in the residential halls, um, you know, during finals week when they're stressed, uh, we went through a little tea meditation to kind of um, start relaxing. So a lot of um, the, the um, oops, hold on, let me pause that real quick. A lot of what we've done has been um, um, broadly adaptable, uh, which is exciting. It started with veterinary medicine and we've gone across. Uh, to start. And this is just an example of video. First, try to find a quiet place away from your work or daily routine. You can try to call your neighbor as a peaceful spot to have tea. Start by heating your water. Now try to relax and take stock of everything going on with you, physically and mentally. You can be happy, sad, or anything in between. But treat each with equanimity, acknowledge these feelings, and begin to focus on the task at hand. Use this time to begin box breathing. Breathing in for three seconds, hold for two, exhale for three, hold again for two. As you breathe, begin to draw awareness to what you hear in your environment. Repeat this until your water is ready. When the water is ready, place the tea. Oh, I apologize. This the volume was low, so I'll I'll stop this here. But essentially, um, it's, this is just an example of the video. Um, so we want to keep building. Uh, we have something called the Global Tea Club, um, where students are kind of the hope is we can start training the students up in in this meditation that they can start um, offering it to the larger community around uh, Davis. Um, and that's kind of where we're at. We would like to do at some point maybe a measure um, of, um, you know, starting to think more about um, assessment on this. Uh, but for now, uh, the, the qualitative feedback has just been fantastic. And the reason the library is such a great place for this is because it is the nexus. This is, I have a colleague uh, that recently, recently retired, Axel Borg, um, who's a uh, post-harvest librarian. And um, he really had a great quote, you know, librarians aren't just connecting people to books or articles, but to the information they need, which includes other people. And I don't think this would have existed without, you know, the different places that all these groups, the Global Tea Initiative, School of Vet Med meet um, at the library. Okay, and I apologize. I am right at the 30 mark and I do want to put the link. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to check the chat for questions and put some of my links up. Uh, if I can find where the Ah, here we go. Okay. So I just put the link here. If you're interested in um, uh, joining in the sessions, there's a link right there for the Zoom sessions. Um, so Learning Revolution asked a great question. Um, does the result of reducing stress anxiety results of meditation occur with both hot tea and cold tea? Um, what can you do when you don't like tea? Uh, so those are all great questions and I'm not prescriptive. I would say staying away from straight caffeine. So mate or um, coffee may not be the most desirable ones uh, to go with or um, Yopan for that matter. Um, at least from what I know 
of it phytochemically right now, but I think chamomile, rooibos, um, any tisane that doesn't have a lot of caffeine is a great choice. Also, um, I would probably stay away from hibiscus if you're doing hot water, because if it sits too long, it gets pretty bitter. Um, but yeah, cold would be absolutely fine. As a matter of fact, with a lot of green teas, you keep it very cold. Um, uh, so yeah, either temperature. And as a matter of fact, one of the rules is for tea, never boiling. So you don't want to have it at boiling temperature. All right. I don't see anything else. So I really appreciate everyone's time and thanks for your patience. I know I'm two minutes over and do apologize, but um, if you have any questions, um, you can always contact me. Um, my name is Eric Fossack, and I'm going to put in my email address right there. Um, feel free to follow up if this is something that you're interested in or would like to uh, do at your library. Um, I'm happy to help out however I can. Thank you. I guess I should stop it, right?